Behind me, we have this 6.2 liter V8 engine in this very nice looking blacked out 2024 Chevy High Country Silverado. And you would think a big V8 engine like this is going to guzzle fuel like it's going out of style. And that's exactly what we're gonna test out today. We're gonna to see just how fuel efficient this V8 can be. And we're gonna see whether or not she's gonna break the bank at the pumps. Welcome back, I'm Alex, and probably to nobody's surprise, we are in a world where the V8 engine is seemingly more and more demonized because, well, of its poor fuel economy and because it emits too many emissions. And well, we're gonna put that notion once again to the test today on my fuel economy loop. Speaking of which, the last truck we had on my fuel economy loop was the most efficient truck I've ever tested. Was it maybe the 2.7 liter EcoBoost? Nope. Was it the new 3.4 liter twin turbocharged engine from Toyota? Nope. Was it GM's own 2.7 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine? Nope. It was the 25 year old 5.3 liter good old V8 engine. It was the most efficient engine I've ever run on my towing loop, which was a little bit of a surprise. And so now that we have this big gas guzzling V8 here. I'm very interested to see how it does on this towing loop. This 6.2 liters putting out 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, but like that 5.3 liter, this is not your typical old school lumbering V8. We got a lot of technology in here. This is direct injection. We got a forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods, billet steel camshaft, dynamic fuel management, start stop technology, and a whole bunch more stuff that could indeed make this engine Pretty darn efficient. The EPA officially rates this truck and engine combination at 17 miles per gallon, which actually is not terrible, but we are about real world results here. And I think it's time we get this truck down to the gas station, fill her up, and I'll meet you guys there. Well, we're full of fuel. We reset our fuel economy on our trip. And well, we are about to embark on our 85 mile fuel economy loop, which consists of three sections, city, country, and highway, ideally giving us a really nice real world fuel economy score. First up, as always, the city. While driving on our city section, I try to keep the truck around 60 kilometers an hour, or 35 miles an hour. And well, this is the most unpredictable section of our drive here. Um, lots of starting and stopping, as you guys can tell. This is also a very big weak point for the larger displacement V8s in comparison to the smaller turbocharged engines. Now, the EPA officially rates this engine at 15 miles per gallon in the city. I think we'll be lucky to get that. Those turbocharged engines, they just have smaller displacements. And usually in the city, when they're idling, lower speeds, there's really no need to spool up those turbos. Um, so generally in the city, those, those smaller displacement turbocharged engines do much, much better. And as we come grinding to a halt here with a yellow light playing it safe, this engine comes to a stop as well. This is the start stop technology. When we're in traffic at a stoplight, the engine turns off. So we're not burning fuel, just idling away. How much fuel does this save? Tough to really tell, but we're going to take every drop we can get on this fuel economy run. In terms of a mechanical advantage, this 6.2 liter engine uses a compression ratio of 11.5 to one, which is, is pretty high, essentially, or in theory, meaning that the thermal efficiency of this engine should be pretty darn good, meaning that the chemical energy of the fuel is gonna be better transferred into mechanical energy to turn the wheels rather than just simply being put into heat. Again, this in theory should mean that we need less fuel for the same task. High compression ratios are one reason why diesel engines are very efficient. The 6.7 Cummins, for example, has a compression ratio of 19 to one. The turbo gas engines in the 1500 trucks currently all kind of sit around 10 to one compression ratio, but there is one downside to this 6.2 having an 11.5 um, to one compression ratio, and some of you guys may already know it. Another mechanical advantage, just like the 5.3 liter, this 6.2 uses a variable displacement oil pump as well as, dun dun dun, zero W20 oil, pretty lightweight oil, and well, that lightweight oil is going to help reduce the internal friction of the engine, which should save some fuel. Thirdly, another mechanical advantage that this engine has in order to save fuel is, you guessed it, dynamic fuel management or DFM. 
which once again, we will get into in just a second. We had just left the city and to nobody's surprise, we are sitting at 18, well, 19 miles per gallon. So that is still the second worst fuel economy we've come with out of the city. Again, I don't think that's a big surprise to anyone with this rather large V8 up front, but it's all good. We are heading into the country section. This is where I think this engine will absolutely shine. We got our cruise control set to 56 miles an hour or 90 kilometers an hour, and we will maintain that throughout our country section. One thing to keep in mind, um, our fuel economy rating here is just what the computer says. We will do the real math at the end of the video. Now, typically engines at these speeds will always do pretty decently on fuel economy, but the reason why I think this engine in particular will do very well in our country section is because while well, we have 460 pound feet of naturally aspirated torque and so when we are going over our hills on this country section which by the way it is pretty bumpy pretty hilly this engine or truck should ideally not have to downshift at all we'll stay in 10th gear which is an extremely heavy overdrive and that's going to keep our rpms very low ideally not burning that much fuel now the other critical thing about these speeds is that i believe or hope that we will be um, really really utilizing our cylinder deactivation technology um, dynamic fuel management dfm for short dynamic fuel management is gm's cylinder deactivation technology previously on the first gen 6.2 liter 2014 to 2018 as part of the ecotech 3 engine platform it used what was called active fuel management or AFM. Active fuel management and the upgraded dynamic fuel management, which this engine utilizes, does seem to get a pretty tough rep. And I would think that's probably because of the one potential downside, and that is potential um, lifter problems. Now, I've made a whole separate video discussing that topic, so if you're more interested, I'll link it down below. Um, but I don't think that's breaking news to anybody. Dynamic fuel management has the ability to shut down any of the eight cylinders in this engine at relatively any time, giving this engine about 17 potential different firing patterns. And while this is perfect for our country drive section that we're on right now, um, when we are on those flatter sections, we really don't need the full brunt of this big V8. So we're gonna have the ability to shut down selected cylinders ideally saving us as much fuel as possible. Now, like I said, with the 5.3 liter V8 from GM, in my opinion, I almost feel like the cylinder deactivation technology is more to lower the emissions of the engine rather than save fuel. GM has found a way to continue to produce their V8 engines as well as allowing them to make the government emission regulations. And we can look at competitors like Ram who just completely scrapped their V8s and said it's no longer worth it. And they went only with a turbocharged, um, smaller displacement engine. So as many of you guys may not necessarily like cylinder deactivation um, technology, it's what allows GM to continue to produce the naturally aspirated V8s. And as we come to the end of our country section, we are averaging 23 0.0 miles per gallon, which I believe is also the second worst fuel economy rating. To be honest, that's actually a little bit surprising. I thought this thing would have really taken advantage of those country roads, um, but obviously not. Next up is our highway section. And well, I honestly don't know what this engine is gonna do. It may prove to be pretty efficient on the highway. The EPA says it will, so we'll see. We just jumped on the highway. We got our cruise control set to 70 miles an hour just let the truck do its thing once again at the cruising speed. I think we might just stick around 23 miles per gallon. Um, I really thought this engine would have taken advantage of that country section, but it really didn't. In a perfect world, I would suspect that this engine would fall back on that nice big displacement for, well, hills like this. And unlike those turbocharged engine and smaller displacement V8s, this thing should not need to downshift, which it looks like it hasn't actually. Only time will tell, it's a real world test. We'll see what happens. This engine uses an 11.51 compression ratio, like we mentioned. But what we didn't mention is this engine requires premium fuel or 91 octane fuel. Technically it is not required. It is only highly recommended. But in reality, this engine is designed and meant to be run with premium fuel. So just keep that in mind. The main reason is because with high compression ratio engines, it's much more likely to experience 
engine knocking with low octane fuel. And well, engine knocking is, or detonation in the cylinder is basically when the fuel is ignited by the pressure or the heat of the cylinder rather than the spark plug. And oftentimes there are two ignition fronts, one from the heat of the cylinder and one from the spark plug. And those ignition fronts collide you get a big bang or an engine knock or detonation in the cylinder. And 91 octane or higher octane fuel is much less likely to be ignited by the heat or the pressure of the cylinder and only the spark plug so you don't get that engine knock. That is why this engine is required to use 91 octane fuel. Well, we're just about to come off the highway. We're averaging 22.4 miles per gallon, which brings this truck, this engine, um, kind of in the middle of the pack, so I'm happy with that. 22.7 miles per gallon is our final fuel economy. We are going to uh, fill this old girl up. All right, that's our first bump there. We'll give her 30 seconds. Three, two, one. And there we go. 13.977 liters. We have our official receipt right here. We finished with 22.7 miles per gallon, which in my opinion is pretty darn good. What's interesting here is that both the GM V8s um, finished ahead of Ford's five liter, which is a smaller displacement V8. There must be something happening with GM's cylinder deactivation technology to allow these V8s to be so efficient. So as much as people don't necessarily like that system, it seems to certainly be working at some capacity. So not only does this 6.2 liter sound fantastic, pull a trailer extremely well, but at least on my test, it's also pretty darn efficient. Now, if you think I'm full of shit, I actually just drove the Monk at 173 kilometers. We average 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Now, who knows if we were using a regular fuel, maybe we'd lose a mile per gallon there, maybe, um, because we are using premium fuel. So just remember that. Lastly, when towing my 8,000 pound enclosed trailer, this 6.2 liter V8 was the second most efficient truck. Crazy. Let me know what you think. Do you guys own one of these 6.2 liters? What kind of fuel economy are you getting? Always like to hear from real owners. And if you like stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because we got lots of cool stuff coming down the tube and uh, we'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.